Yeah. You bet. Yep. All right. Thank you for your patience, guys. Really, um, I don't know what the deal was, but it kept throwing me off video, but I've got it working now. And we're past seven o'clock, so we'll call the meeting to order at this time. And I'm going to ask uh, Reverend Vanderclock if he would open with prayer. Okay, I would like to um, tonight share a prayer that is uh, meaningful to me, and I hope um, you will also um, appreciate it. Spirit of the living God, bless the work of our hands, our minds, and our hearts. May the work offered be a reflection of all that is good within us. In planning, creating, doing, grant us the courage to patiently listen for the stirring of your presence. Grace us with your joyful moments in the midst of daily routine. Enliven our spirits with humor. Fill us with reverence for one another and gratitude for our diversity. Nourish our spirit with the awareness that work is holy. May unity, beauty, and truth be the fruit of our labor. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Appreciate that. Now for our Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag, the flag of the, the United, United States, States of America, America. And, and to the republic, the republic for which it stands, stands one, nation, one nation, under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty, liberty and, and justice, justice for all. For all. Thank you. At this time, I'm going to ask the clerk to call the roll. Mr. Chairman, let the record show that all members of the board are present, with the exception of Carol Skolma, who is on vacation. But in keeping with our virtual meeting procedures, I will call uh, the roll. Mr. Bosch. Yes. Mrs. Steele. Here. Mr. Schwamm. Here. Mr. Manier. Here. Mr. Weiringa. Here. And the clerk is present. All right. Thank you. And uh, before we go to the approval of the agenda, my quote for this evening comes from Samuel Adams. Uh, before he was a beer, he was a founding father. And he is known to have said about voting, with voting being upon us here in the township, let each citizen remember at the moment he is offering his vote that he is executing one of the most solemn trusts in human society for which he is accountable both to God and to his country. All right. Item number six, the approval of the agenda. Is there a motion to approve our agenda this evening? Mr. Chairman, I'd make the motion to approve the agenda as presented. Before. All right. It's been moved in support. All in favor. I think we can say this one by voice vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right. Item number seven, communication letters and reports received for information. Item number eight, uh, a public hearing on posh nails and spa liquor license application. Is there someone who'd like to uh, make a motion to place that before the board to open the public meeting? I'll make the motion make to that. open the public hearing on this topic. I will support that, Mr. Chairman. All right, uh, any discussion? <laughs> All right, then let's take a roll call vote. Mrs. Steele. Yes. Mr. Bosch. Yes. Clerk votes yes. Mr. Schwann. Yes. Mr. Manier. Yes. Mr. Weiringa. Yes. That's carried. Thank you. At this time, uh, Dan Carlton, are you able to tell us, is there anyone uh, present online uh, who yeah, may wish nine to people, Nine people in attendance, but. All right. So any of them who'd wish to address the board at this time uh, may do so. They have to raise their hand. We have one person I'll, I'll acknowledge there. Hello, how's it going everyone? Can you hear me? Yep. Yes. yes. Yep. Great. Um, I'm not sure are you able to see me too, or um, is video, video not a thing with uh, these board meetings for um, public? They just hear you. We can see a picture okay. of you, just hear you. Oh, okay, great. Yeah, well, um, I guess I'll just start off with, um, with what I had to say. So, um, hi, my name is Jimmy Wynn. I'm a lifelong resident of Wyoming, Michigan. 
And I'm actually here today representing Tony, Hannah, and Posh Nails and Spa in the request to obtain a license to sell liquor at a third location that is being built right now in Jenison. Um, so first off, I wanna say um, thank you uh, to the Township Board for letting me be here to provide my thoughts and input and hopefully answer any questions um, anyone may have. Um, I'm happy to see that everyone's able to show up except one through this video chat, which is great. I know it's been a very difficult period for everyone, including uh, for Tony, Hannah, and myself. Uh, I was just furloughed from Gordon Food Service in March, and my wedding in June was just uh, postponed until next year. Or else, mm. you know, um, Hannah and Tony and I would prevent in-laws. So um, Tony and Hannah, they're all are are also um, owners of the Posh Nails and Spa. They're all, they should also be on this uh, call as well. Um, so to start things off a little bit. Um, I just want to talk about Posh and the team, just to tell you guys, you know, a little bit of background. So um, Posh is the creation of um, Tony and Hannah. It started off about a decade ago with the very first salon. It was a small salon. There's only two of them working and they had no employees. So, you know, through all the hard work and goodwill, you know, they were able to build the first Posh, Posh location in Wyoming about four years ago. That's the one on Byron Center in uh, M6. And last year, they actually just expanded and built a second location in downtown Grand Rapids. And um, so right now, what we're hoping to do is build a, well, we are building the third location in Jenison, Michigan right now. So the project has actually been going on for about a year since January. And so, but due to this pandemic, construction was postponed for a few months, but construction has resumed. And we do hope to open up the third uh, Posh Nails Spa location on Baldwin sometime in September. Um, of course, uh, of course, um, Pasha's success would not have been possible if it wasn't for Tony and Hannah, because, you know, if it wasn't for them being so, you know, friendly, kind hearted and generous people, um, you know, all these characteristics, you know, besides business skills definitely helped them uh, get the success that they got today. And, you know, if you want to know, you know, I'm sure they have their customers, neighbors, employees on here who would echo the same thing I'm saying right now. So across the two Posh locations, you know, we hire about 35 employees and we're hoping to hire another 18 to 20 manicures in this Jenison uh, location. So, you know, starting a business is a very difficult thing. And now with this pandemic, you know, it's even more difficult than ever. So, I mean, no one could have predicted this pandemic and no one could have thought, you know, this would be, you know, the time we wanted to expand. So this third Posh location really needs, you know, this liquor license to Give them a helping hand to grow in uh, Jenison. So I watched the finance and the board meeting video um, a couple of weeks ago, and I'm, I understand like everyone had a few questions um, that had that was not addressed. So what I want to do is, you know, I have four or five questions right now that I want to address that I believe everyone here um, had heard of during the finance meeting and the previous board meeting. So the first question is, you know, have we ever been rejected from a liquor license or re been rejected um, a liquor license from anywhere else before. So, you know, we've never actually applied for a liquor license at any other location. And this is due to, you know, those other cities having no more available quota licenses. <laughs> we found this online. And so after checking out the Georgetown Township um, ordinances, you know, chapter um, four, section six, article C, we re noticed that, you know, the township board you know, has the ability to provide a variance to the very strict requirement of this chapter, allowing a business that does not have, that has less than 50% of sales from food to obtain a liquor license. And so that's kind of why we apply, knowing that you guys have about 26 quota licenses left and knowing that you guys have in your ordinance that you are able to provide this variance that we need. And so that was kind of why we applied. And, you know, the other question was, you know, how do we plan on checking IDs? So unlike a bar or at a restaurant where there might be only one bartender for many different customers, at the salon, there's a manicurist working with every customer. So as such, you know, whenever a customer would like to purchase a drink, the manicurist would check their ID. So it's really not possible to pass off the drink to a minor because every customer is under the supervision of a manicurist who would know if they had not been ID. And also another question I got was um, how will these drinks be sold at the salon? So these, you know, we don't plan on giving these drinks away or having these drinks as part of the service. So to us, you know, that would be kind of unfair 
if we gave the drinks out because you know nothing is free. So the cost of those drinks would have been built into the service price in the scenario. So this means you know people who are not drinking are paying more for their service, subsidizing the cost of the alcohol for people who do drink. So because of that, you know every drink will be purchased separately from the service, and nothing's given out, nothing's free, and it's going to be very clear on the menu. Um, another thing too, uh, another question I believe is, you know, will we have limits on our drinks? So yes, we will. Um, plan is to have two drinks max. You know, we want alcohol to help relax the people and make the experience a bit more enjoyable. But you know, we're not trying to get people sloshed up and drive home. That's not our business. You know, on average, a service at our salon takes anywhere from 50 to 60 minutes from start to the polish being dry. So with that being said, you know, we believe that that amount of time, that one hour time frame, should be able to, you know, get an individual with one or two drink down to a safe legal limit before they, you know, started driving home. And, you know, of course, there are, you know, mandatory state trainings. And, you know, if there are any required mandatory state trainings, you know, we'll have our receptionists, our hostess, kind of like, you know, take these trainings, just to make sure, you know, they are able to create like a you know, safe environment for just not when you know the customer is in the salon, but also when they leave and are in the public as well. And another point I want to bring up, you know, another question was, you know, um, just you know, will this provide any kind of tax revenue for the city or the state? And you know, on average, we get about 90 customers a day at each salon. So we did a little quick survey on Facebook um, prior to this meeting, just to get a general idea of you know who would purchase a drink. So of about like 100 people who actually answered or took the survey, about 91% of people say they would purchase a drink as part of their service at the salon. So with that being said, you know, with hiring 18 to 20 manicures and, you know, the number of drinks that we would sell each day, 90% of, let's say 90 drinks, you know, I think we, Posh Nails Spa, would be able to be a great addition to the city of Jenison's and, you know, be a great support through, you know, whatever taxes that we pay. So, and I know there's a couple other questions too. So I guess, you know, that's all I really had to say. And if anyone has any other questions, you know, I'm, I'll be happy to uh, answer and address anything as well. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wynn. Um, I think uh, there may be others and I'll ask Dan here momentarily whether anyone else wishes to speak here, but do any of the board members have questions for Mr. Wynn that he's not addressed already? I have a couple of questions. Uh, the first one is, with the two drink minimum, will that be posted in your um, business? Maximum. Um, maximum. Maximum. That's what I meant. Two drinks yeah. maximum. I okay. said minimum. Maximum. Yeah. No problem. Yeah, of course. I mean, you know, we believe two drinks will be, you know, as much as we want to provide. You know, we're not a restaurant bar service. We don't make our income from, you know, selling alcohol. But we want it to be part of, like, you know, the experience that an individual person that a person gets to kind of help draw in the customer. And I mean, right now with everything that's going on, you know, I think this uh, ability to kind of serve alcohol legally would really help, you know, our business. And so, you know, our policy is going to be two drinks maximum. And if that is required to post up, you know, on the wall or anywhere, you know, we will be gladly to post that up and make, you know, and also to, you know, I'm sure, whenever a customer asks the manicures for a drink, you know, I'm sure the manicures, and we can make sure of that, that the manicures will let them know, hey, you know, at our salon, we have a two drink maximum. So, so that uh, hopefully answered your question. Okay, the other um, question that I have, two others. The, first, and the next one is with everything, as you said, that's going on, <clears throat> have you discussed, investigated, whether or not you can even do this at this time, considering with the COVID-19 and the governor's mandates and bars, um, and, and yours is not a bar, um, but have you investigated whether that this, at this point in time, is even doable legally? Um, so with that, uh, yeah, that's a good question. So, you know, with a class C, like the license that we believe that we will need, you know, we will follow any, you know, um, ordinances or executive orders that, you know, applies to someone who holds such um, liquor license. And if that is the case that, you know, we are treated as if we are a bar and we are unable to um, serve at this time, you know, we will just not serve at this time. And, you know, 
in and when you know the state does open up to allow bars and restaurants and let's say in our case our salon to serve alcohol and liquor you know we don't plan on serving from like a fountain drink machine or a tap which is kind of like the main reason why a lot of bars are shut down too just because of like you know the social distancing and how it's served from let's say a tap or like fond drinks but you know we'll be serving from like single serve wine glasses or single serve you know um beer bottles or um tin cans so we don't plan on like you know having a big bottle that we share and pour in everyone's reusable cups so i think that's how we're going to able to help kind of like combat this uh virus and my third question is if your request for a liquor license is not approved uh, tonight. Um, your posh nails would still be opening. Correct. I mean, you know, this is a plan that we've had it on motion since maybe December last year, and we took some really, you know, some final steps signing leases back in January. So, I mean, you know, regardless of you know how the decision is, you know, we will be you know a part of Jenison. You know, we will have a third, third location there. And it's not dependent on this uh, liquor license, but you know, in order to, I guess, have a better chance of succeeding in this very tough environment right now, you know, I think that would be a, a hand, hand up or a competitive advantage, want to call, call it, you know, to allow us to succeed, hire the people we want to hire, the 18, 20 manicures, and kind of like draw in people. Because I mean, at Posh Nails and Spa, we're a bit more of a higher end, high class kind of um, salon. So we don't do anything at, at minimum. You know, we have much higher prices than the local, uh, the average local price. And so I hope, hopefully, you know, that will help draw in the type of people, but, you know, the people who are willing to spend more money to the local restaurants and the businesses around here on um, Baldwin and Jenison. Okay, thank you for answering my questions. Yeah, thank you, Rick. Anyone else have any questions for Mr. Yeah. Wynn? I mean, if I can ask, you're very articulate and you've given us a lot of information. I'm, I'm wondering what the hours are going to be. Um, so if this is the hour for alcohol, will be just from uh, open to close. So if there was a wedding party that, well, I know there are certain different rules for different cities, depending on the like, ability to serve and sell uh, alcohol or liquor for possibly for consumption on the weekends. So we'll definitely you know, follow whatever guidelines that are, you know, we have to. But, you know, the plan is to be able to serve during the hours that we are open, which are mainly from 9.30 to 7.30 on uh, Monday through Fridays, and then 6.30s and 5.30 on the weekend. So it's, it's going to be end very early. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, no problem, John. Anyone else? All right, hearing none. Uh, Dan, are there others that have raised their hand to comment? No, that was the only one. All right. Then if everyone's satisfied in terms of the information from Mr. Wynn, uh, I'd look for a motion to close the public hearing. I'll make that motion, Mr. Chairman. Support. Okay, it's been moved and supported. Uh, Mr. Clark, would you please call the roll? Mrs. Steele. Yes. Mr. Bosch. Yes. Clerk votes yes. Mr. Schwamm. Yes. Mr. Manier. Yes. Mr. Weiringa. Yes. That's carried. Thank you. At this time, I know this is a subject that was addressed at the last meeting, the one that I, uh, the one time I missed this year, but I know that you talked about it thoroughly. So is anyone prepared at this time then to put a motion before the board uh, one way or the other? Do we need to talk specifically about changes that would need to happen to our ordinances in order to approve this? Let's let's save that for well. We we can have discussion after there's a motion on the floor. Okay. It, it's permissible. Well, Go ahead. Then, in that case, I'll make a motion that we should approve the liquor license for Posh Nail and Spa or Nail Salon. I'm trying to remember exactly what their um, company name is. But that we should I'll, approve. I'll support that. Okay, it's been moved and supported. Now, uh, discussion about the motion that is before you. Go ahead, Becky, if you wish. Um, one, just one piece um, has to do with hours of service. Um, I just want to make sure that it's consistent with what, that their version of open to close is consistent with what we would allow um, 
at places like bowling alleys and golf courses and other places that that serve alcohol um, kind of in a recreational setting. Um, and I just know that when we talked about this um, at our last meeting, there was some concern that maybe um, approving this doesn't fit within our existing ordinances and we might need to do some revision. And so I just wanted us to be able to have that conversation. All right, does uh, anyone wish to pick up that conversation or to uh, make any other point? I jump in and just say that uh, I'm, I'm kind of torn on this whole thing. I, I think the, the overall idea is it's a great concept. I think that there's a lot of people that would enjoy this. And uh, while I'm not one that gets my nails done too often, I, I know that there are plenty of people that, that, that would appreciate that. My concern and the, and the one thing that I, I would like to bring up is that th this would count against our total um, allowance of liquor licenses. And so I, I would think that if we do approve this, and I think it would be kind of a cool thing if we did, um, where can we draw a line of demarcation in that if every other nail salon, hair salon, any other business in the community uh, would, would then maybe step forward and try and get one as well? Um, and does that close the door for any new restaurants if, if we run out of licenses really quick with this? So I'm just trying to think what, what would be a differentiating factor from this business um, that would maybe prevent a hundred other businesses in our community to step forward and try and get the same kind of concept. I, I think it is a cool concept and I think it'd be really cool to have. So that's kind of my question. And I don't know if anybody has any thoughts on that. Jason, if I may, I, I missed the last meeting um, and I didn't have a chance to speak to this, but I think you've raised, uh, even as a supporter of the motion before us, you've raised what I think is the critical point there, not just the limitation on the number of licenses, but the fact that we would be unhinging or unhooking our requirement that there be food sales of some nature for there to be an alcohol license uh, granted. And I believe that they've got two other locations that uh, certainly Grand Rapids would be a better shot for them to be approved than, than perhaps here in Jenison. But how would, would it be any different? How would we establish a distinguishing point between that and others we've turned out down in the past or other similar types of ventures, that is where they want to serve alcohol on a limited basis <laughs> without, without serving food, without you know, meeting the requirement in terms of being a restaurant. The only place thus far that has uh, perhaps been granted what might be seen here as an exception or as a case-by-case -case basis uh, approval was rebounders to my analogy. And they do sell food there. And that was something that was discussed when we made that uh, approval. But here, um, I, I think if we approve this, we're being inconsistent. And, um, you know, there, there's no food being sold. And Jason, to your point, I think the licenses will be quickly used up. And what we're essentially going to do is a future board is going to have to, at some point, curtail somewhat ambiguously or without any clear line of demarcation to say, look, we think other larger restaurants or other businesses we'd rather see obtain a license are going to need these. Therefore, we're going to shelve so many of them and cut you off at this point. Uh, um, you know, those who don't receive one then, uh, I think Mr. Wynn referred to it as a competitive advantage. He's indeed right. It's a competitive advantage. And it may be strategic to request it here in Jenison versus other locations because, quite honestly, no one in the vicinity here uh, sells uh, alcohol by the glass like that that's not a restaurant. So, indeed, it would be an advantage to them and one that I think would be opening a door that we won't be able to close. Mr. Wynn, if he's listening still, and John, I think you said this is very well-spoken. You're very articulate. You make your case very well. I can understand, frankly, why you would make this request. I think your customers would probably, by and large, enjoy it. Um, you know, I admire your business risk. I admire your entrepreneurial spirit. I admire all of that. And I'm, I'm grateful, frankly, as you pointed out with Rich, that you're going to open regardless of whether or not you receive this license. We're grateful. We're glad to have you in our community. I've got a wife and four daughters. Believe me, I know about nail bills um, and I'm happy to pay it because they enjoy it that much but uh, to me it would be a an unfair advantage and in fact I think would be somewhat violative of a principle that we've generally adhered to and I, I suppose the day is going to come where the majority of the board whoever they may be feels differently but my instinct has been that up until now we've been we've been a majority at least uh, of the opinion that there's certain criteria should be met one of which is, is some level of food sale. 
and therefore I, I personally would be opposed. That's my thought in response to your point, Jason. But Jim, doesn't our existing ordinance, just to play devil's advocate a little bit sure. respectfully, um, oh, I believe that our existing ordinance says that, that the, there should be additional income derived from the sale of food and beverages, like you're saying, um, other than alcohol. But then the ordinance goes on to say, or from indoor or outdoor recreational activities, such as golf, bowling, or other similar activities. Um, I'm not arguing that getting a manicure or pedicure is the same as golf or bowling. Um, but I don't think it's that big of a stretch to call it indoor recreation, because like you said, your wife and daughter go and rack up their bills, right? Because it's one of the things, you know, that, um, that mostly women, but do recreationally. Um, and, and so I just wanted to throw that out there, that we have kind of stuck to um, the sales being derived from other food and beverage sales, and that stood in the way of Michigan Moonshine and some other pieces. Um, but I don't think that it, that it is um, way off base compared to what we have in our ordinances, because there is the or indoor outdoor recreation as a income revenue source. Thank you, Becky. I'm going to say one thing and then I'll surrender the floor. I don't mean to, to I just didn't get my say the last meeting. I was going to say in response to that, Becky, that I'm glad you read the verbiage because I had not remembered that phraseology there at the end. And, and that gives us even further reason for why we supported uh, with rebounders. They clearly fit that definition. And to me, it would be a stretch to bring uh, a nail salon under that. I think I think other businesses would beg to differ with that being encompassed within that definition. So it's either a, you know an ordinance change, in my opinion, if there were a majority support for that, uh, to add additional language or to broaden that language. That's my personal opinion. And as I say, I'll surrender the floor. I've, I've spoken my piece. Mr. Chairman, I would just say that, I would just say that um, I agree with what you have said. Um, I think in the past we did talk about the possibility, and I'm not sure about this, but it seems as if we talked about the possibility of creating a limit for a, this certain kind of enterprise or business that would come under the rubric of our ordinance, um, which would, if that would be doable, if we can do that, then that would be one way that we could try to keep this from becoming unhinged as Jim expressed it. Um, but I Rich, don't know. are you thinking like, um, like revising our ordinance to say something like, um, no more than five um, of our allotted liquor licenses shall be granted to businesses that do not bring in the majority of their sales from food, something I, like that? Well, I, I don't know if it's exactly like that, but yes, that would be the kind of the tenor of what I'm, what I'm- To take I'm, our, I'm our whole quota and subset it out. I'm not necessarily suggesting that. I'm just simply saying that it seems as if when this was originally brought forward that that was a suggestion that was made that that's that could be a consideration but i'm not personally suggesting that right now i'm just saying at one point that was discussed anyone else uh, yeah i i would uh, i would agree with jason i think he makes great points about with our limited amount of um, liquor license liquor licenses uh, this would open the floodgates and every hair salon and nail salon is going to want to do the same thing. Um, and we do have a limited number, so that would be a concern. I do have a concern about there being no food option. Um, and then also my concern, um, uh, uh, Mr. Wynn had said uh, it would be a two drink maximum, but is that possible for us? Could we do an amendment to the motion that that's written in the motion? Or I'm not sure that's even legal. Um, for us to put that in there because my concern is it's if it starts as um, two uh, and say the business model had changes um, and they're granted a full liquor license then it could technically just become a full-on bar not that they're going to do that but that option would be there so is there a way to if if they're in agreement that two is the max and they're good with that and is that something we could amend the license resolution Technically, 
The board can do what it likes to do, whether that's enforceable or not will be a, a different legal question. I think there right. will be some challenges to try to enforce something like that. And uh, to answer Rich's question, I mean the board or Becky's, the board can establish its own with by resolution and say only oh, we're gonna only issue a maximum number and not see any other applications. I mean the board can do that too if they wanted to limit like to a certain number, whatever number it is, but it's only until the board changes its mind and changes that number. That's all it's valid to. Uh, they'd also, you'd have to be granting a variance. There is an option option to grant a variance. And I think that's what was referenced. So you have that right if you wanted to waive the food requirement under these circumstances. So that could be terms of the variance, but it would be a struggle to enforce certain items, whether no one's going to know whether they switch to three drinks or something. It, it'd just be very hard. Right. Uh, so. Making the assumption that if we were to approve this, that we would get a whole bunch of other applicants in the same kind of situation, other salons. I'd be curious if there was a way to get some kind of poll or survey amongst businesses. And if only five or six came back and said, yes, we would apply, maybe that would you know, give us our ability to set that amount. But my thought is if, if we if we allow it to one, there's all, they're all probably gonna want it. Uh, and that's just kind of where I'm saying, hey, if, if there is a couple, it's just a couple. I think it's a cool concept, but I, I don't want to lose all of our available licenses and, and not have the, the potential for any new bars. I think that was one of the things that Mr. Wynn said. One of the reasons they don't have licenses in their other locations is that the, there aren't any more available. And I, and I, I don't want to be in that situation. And honestly, Jason, Jason I, I think to answer that point, um, we'll probably never run out of licenses and here's why because the future board that will have to deal with this will cut it off at some point and face the criticism of those who didn't get one that's the reality we're not going to let these expire and go away to nail salons and hair salons but at some point we're going to draw an arbitrary line and everybody who didn't get in the door is going to be upset and they'll give flack to whoever's on the board at that point in time Jim, i like the concept um, seems like excellent entrepreneurs that we'd like to encourage. I am concerned that we don't have that this, the, the fact that it doesn't follow our guidelines right now. Uh, I'd like to see us look at possibly adjusting that in the future. Uh, I would almost encourage them to apply again and that if, if this is defeated, and that it should be something to look carefully at. I think we have about 26, 27 liquor licenses with the new census that's coming. We're probably going to end up with more. But I think we need to have some guidelines uh, because you could have. Uh, what are going to be the guidelines for possibly saying no? Uh, what I do think is positive is that their business is nails. It's, it's not selling moonshine. Their, their business is nails. This is to enhance the environment. I like that. Uh, but I think we need to have some guidelines before we go much farther with it. Anyone else? All right, hearing none, there's a motion before the board at this time. And if discussion is concluded, um, that motion not being withdrawn, we should vote upon it. And I'm looking to the clerk to uh, call the roll. It is a roll call vote, Mr. Bosch. Yeah, went last time first. Um, no. Clerk votes no. Mr. Schwamm? No. Mrs. Steele? Yes. Mr. Manier? No. Mr. Weringa? No. Motion is defeated. Thank you. And thank all of you for your thoughtful input as well as Mr. Wynn's presentation. You guys are always very good at stating your points being, uh, uh, disagreeing without being disagreeable, and I appreciate that. Uh, and as John said, I mean, perhaps there will be another time when this comes before us again in the future. At this point, we're to item number nine, public comments for action on items remaining on the agenda. Uh, is there anyone raising their hand, uh, Dan? Uh, Mr. Wynn, so I'll, I'll unmute Mr. Wynn. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, I just had a quick question after kind of like listening to everyone kind of deliberate. And I know like, you know, the ordinance um, 
chapter four, section six, you know, didn't even have this variance in 2019. It wasn't until I kind of showed up to the uh, office and inquired about this that I was told, hey, you know what? We actually made amendments to the ordinance and that now we do provide uh, variances. And so they had to go update the website within this new ordinance. So my question is, well, in, in December last year, you guys added this variance. So what is this variance there to do or what businesses are you looking to, um, you know, uh, help with this variance? And I mean, we are willing to, you know, according to your uh, guidelines ordinance, you know, be imposed additional requirements to ensure that the spirit and intent of this chapter is maintained. And, you know, we are fine with that. And, um, I, and I mean, you know, I understand there's 26 current um, licenses. There will be more. And I mean, I'm not sure how long have you had these, you know, 40 something licenses, but I have a feeling within the near future, there's not going to be 26 bars or restaurants that are being opened up in any time in the near future with this whole pandemic. If anything, you know, working in Gordon Food Service, restaurants that we service has been closed, bars have been closed. If anything, you know, people have been closing businesses. So with that being said, maybe 30 something, 35 liquor license available. I don't see this being gone in the near future. I mean, out of the 30, out of the 40 something you guys had, how long has it been that you guys gave out liquor license? Not even half is gone in over 10, 15, 20 something years. I just don't think that, you know, by giving us a liquor license, it's gonna impose any um, burdens on any restaurant entrepreneurs who want to open up restaurants and bar in the future. And if it does, it's not gonna be for another five, 10 years maybe. So, um, and I mean, you know, I understand. So I think really, you know, I just want to say, you know, I just want to, you know, when you guys added this uh, division to C in the section, um, chapter four, section six, I guess this variance uh, piece, what businesses are you, were you guys actually trying to help with this? Because I feel like, you know, we fit this variance that you guys, you know, agreed to add to the ordinance December last year. So I just don't, I mean, I'm fine with waiting and I'm fine with, you know, letting, the board, you know, make amendments and figure everything out in order to kind of limit the amount of people who will have these licenses. And, you know, once that is done, you know, I'll keep checking and I'll make sure, you know, once you guys have, you know, that language in your ordinance that I will apply again. And so truthfully, you know, I don't think there's anyone who's going to even apply because the thing is, you know, no one would have known about this. And I mean, like you say, you guys don't make anything public. No one, show that everyone who showed up today is because, you know, we try to rally them, rally the support, rally the public hearing. No one here is going to like know that the variance has changed and no one has known that the variance has changed since December, you know, only Posh Nails and Spa, you know, and myself have done the research to figure out, Hey, you know, Georgetown Township has changed and updated the uh, ordinance to allow variances. And so that's why we apply. And so for you to include that language and not even, put it to use, I think it's just kind of a waste. So, I mean, I'm looking forward to you guys updating the ordinance to kind of limit the amount of people or businesses that can get these liquor licenses. And um, yeah, thank you for your time again. Um, appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Wynn. Uh, this won't be a time, just so you know, to respond to the point you just made simply because of protocol. But if anyone wishes later in the meeting during discussion to address a point they can choose to do so, but we thank you. Uh, Dan, is there anyone else raising their hand for public comment at this time? All right. No, there's not. All right, thank you. We'll move on then uh, and close that public comment period. Move on to item number 10, consent agenda. Uh, does anyone wish to remove any item from the consent agenda? Hearing none, is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? Mr. Chairman, I'll make the motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. Support. Support. Moved and supported. Why don't we roll call again, just because we're on Zoom. If you would, please, Mr. Clerk. Mr. Manier? Yes. Mr. Schwamm? Yes. Mrs. Steele? Yes. Clerk votes yes. Mr. Bosch? Yes. It's carried. Thank you. At this time, we come to item number 11, immediately right into our second public comment period. Uh, anyone who is participating in the public right now online uh, may, again, address the board at this time for up to three minutes. Uh, Dan, is there anyone uh, raising their hand? No one. 
All right. Hearing no one, then our second public comment period will be closed. And we now come to item number 12 in our, uh, in our shorter agenda tonight, uh, discussion and general information. Does anyone on the board wish to bring up any matters for discussion uh, at this time? I'll just respond to Mr. Wynn and say, hey, uh, first of all, thank you for, for speaking tonight. Thank you for bringing your business to Jenison. Um, I don't know that, that tonight's no vote was a no forever. Uh, personally, I'd like to just kind of get a little information and talk to some other businesses and, and see where we're at. So, um, you know, keep doing what you're doing. Thank you for what you're doing. And uh, hopefully we can talk again in the future. I, I, I really do like the concept that you're proposing. Thank you. Anyone else? I would give the same encouragement that Jason just said. I, I like the concept. Okay. All right. Is that all? I have a start? couple things. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, is that okay? I don't want to be talking over somebody. Um, I have three things. First, on behalf of the Jenison Historical Association, I just wanted to remind you guys that they are doing an online survey to document people's experiences with the pandemic shutdown that started in March. Um, they want to be able to preserve anecdotes and family experiences as part of the museum's public record and likely use them for a display in the future. Um, they were excited to see that Carol submitted some thoughts to that survey. So if any of you are interested in doing that and need me to resend you the link, let me know. Um, second, I don't want this to turn into a debate or hurt feelings or criticism or um, something contentious, but I want to talk for just a second about how we use our platform as elected officials to share personal political opinions. I struggled a lot four years ago when I was running for office and didn't know any of you well. Um, with this board discussion time at the end of meetings during the campaign season being used to share personal political beliefs. Um, four years ago, this time became a forum to criticize or question other people who might not share the same opinions as we did, or as board members did. Um, and it felt unjust because it was very obvious that the other side's opinion or message was being handicapped by that person not having the same platform to respond. Um, I feel like we've grown a ton in that regard over the last four years. Um, we've exchanged some apologies, which I'm really thankful for. I feel like we're in a good place. Um, and I like that so far this campaign season, board discussion hasn't been used for that political purpose. Um, but that said, I do think that the recent letter that went out with our tax statements did kind of flashback to that old mindset a little bit. Jim, I respect you so much. And I believe that you have used your leadership position to do so much good for this community. But I just wanna voice my sadness that your letter um, which usually does such a wonderful job providing a relatively unbiased update on our community, began by sharing your political opinion on the governor's shutdown of our state. Instead of your usual tone of moving collectively forward and improving our community, it felt a little bit divisive or targeted at a specific political base. And that just made me feel disappointed and sad. Um, I think I took it extra personally since the letter started with, and I'm quoting, I would like to take the occasion of your summer property tax bill to provide you with an update from your elected officials. Um, because I think that that implied to many people that this was a political opinion that we shared collectively or that you were speaking on behalf of us collectively. Um, I'm not angry. I want us to still be in a good place and be able to work together really positively. I'm just sad. Um, and so I, I just feel the need to kind of throw that energy out there um, because I hope that we can do better for our community and for its diverse opinions and family situations and life experiences moving forward. I just gotta tell you last night, um, my son spiked 104 degree fever and in the world of COVID, I've never been so terrified in my life. Um, and instantly as a mom, you go to counting who in your family, you know, or in your close circle of friends that you've been in touch with recently and, um, and spreading what you could have accidentally exposed them to. Um, and that's a really frightening thing. And, and so I just um, feel like I need to throw my opinions out there on the, that one. So I hope, thank you for that time. Um, the third thing is that I want to just let you know that this afternoon I met with the four teams who are planning a peaceful Black Lives Matter March for July 25. 
Their names are Max, Elise, Nadia, and Sharif. Um, they are going to be freshmen in high school this year. They're only 14, and they are trying to plan this event. Um, and I just want to say publicly that I'm really struck by their passion and their courage and their leadership, and I really wish them well in their event. And I wanted to say thanks to Dan and Rad and to Sergeant Coster who met with them also just to answer some of their questions and help them understand how our system of government works. So thanks to all of those people. Very good. Appreciate it, Becky. And as one who you addressed a point to, I want to uh, provide a, a bit of a rebuttal and simply say, first of all, I've always appreciated, Becky, the way in which you share and the fact that not only in our meetings, but I think socially and social media and elsewhere, you've been a very good communicator for this board and we really appreciate it. You step into, frankly, into worlds and situations that some of us aren't trafficking in. That is, we're maybe not rubbing shoulders. You're you're more of a millennial and, and some of us, you know, aren't millennials. Let's just put it that way. And so I greatly appreciate it. I never have an issue with you speaking your mind. I don't today in any way and I respect your opinion very much. I think if you were in my position and uh, knew how often people try to pull you into one direction or another and to make a statement or to take a position and so on, I got, I got a good deal of criticism that I was so uh, quiet or didn't speak out and what have you. And I think I've been quite restrained, you knowing you know, somewhat of my points of view, I've been very restrained politically in, in these four years as supervisor and even in this letter the opinion I shared, which I do use the phrase, by the way, if you look in that paragraph, I say, in my opinion. So again, I, I'm not speaking for the board, it's in my opinion. And even the, the viewpoint I gave, I tried to be very tactful and I surrounded it with language about being considered the more vulnerable and talking about keeping the senior center closed longer, et cetera. So I maybe didn't hit the mark with everyone that way, I get it. I don't regret, um, rarely making a political point of view because I think that's in part in part what I'm elected to do. I don't view this as a Republican Democrat role that I sit in as much as in a leadership role. I try as best I can to bring consensus and, and what have you uh, and to respectfully disagree. So I would just respectfully disagree but to tell you that as seldom as I have offered any sort of public opinion or of my and you you can watch my Facebook or otherwise I'm not out there stirring it up. I could be and you could really all be mad at me and say, look what you've caused to Georgetown Township and a reputation. And there are some who I won't name, who certainly have been very out there one way or the other. Um, I think you can count on the fact the next four years, I will be, um, unless things happen that I can't foresee right now, my general expectation is that my, my political opinions will be fairly limited um, and carefully couched if they are in as being in my opinion and, and not meaning to represent the rest of you as a board so but just so you know others share your opinion as well some of them so you're not alone becky um you didn't misread anything i think some people uh have felt just as strongly as you have and i respect their opinion as well so thank you i don't say this in any way to placate or to to, to just kind of brush it off i hear i listen i try to be uh judicious and it will it will certainly uh you know caused me to continue to be careful about rendering those opinions publicly, but thank you. Thank you for I your- I really appreciate opinion. that you and I can um, can have, even in a public platform like this, a conversation where, um, where we're both coming from opposite ends of the spectrum, you know, as a business owner versus a teacher, um, this experience is just different. Um, yeah. And so I really, I appreciate that we can, um, that we can both use our voices to um, clar clarify our own opinions. Yep. Um, and I appreciate that you letting me be heard. Thank you. You're a valuable board member, Becky. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, yeah, I would just say um, I agree with Becky on that point of when I read the letter, the first thing I saw too was uh, from your elected officials. And that is, well, I don't remember giving my input on that. Um, so I, I agree it was misleading and there were a number of residents who did point out that fact. Of, hey, Michael, before you go further, can oh, I just sorry. interject on that elected officials point? I was thinking because Rich and Carol were contributing that I was meaning and inartfully apparently meaning the three that were that were providing columns or, or excerpts. Right. That's the only time I use that phrase and, and I can see how you would interpret it as, look, there's seven of you, not just three. And to that extent, I apologize. I didn't mean that, but I was not careful enough with my words on that so yeah I and I'm not saying it was intentional by any means um but yeah that did throw me on the back because I had read the front and I'm like yeah 
and then I, I saw the back and never in the history of letters in our tax bill for communication have the treasurer or clerk ever given an update. So that threw me off too. And I'm like, look, oh, come on. Um, so that was another point. I don't think it was intentional. I would hope, I would hope it isn't. Um, I can address that if you'd like. I can address um, that. If okay. And then the, the other issues I had too were um, one about our healthy rainy day fund, our budget stabilization fund, which is still zero. It was a million. Uh, and I double checked the budget stabilization, the uh, balance sheet, and it is in fact at zero. So, um, and then also as far as stable ground, I think we're good. We've got a lot of money. We've got a lot of money in water and sewer, which is fantastic. As far as our money to spend on either emergencies or whatever, that's questionable. And that's what, what my concern was with COVID-19 and us losing that project. Dan, is that still right? About four hundred to $500,000 of our revenue sharing we're not going to get? It's, it's an estimate, but that's still our right. estimate. Yes. Okay. For the year. So just, I mean, just ballparking in. And that was my concern is, are we on a, sta a stable platform? I think so. We've, we've got some money, but um, like you said, it's belt tightening for the library. And then with this unexpected COVID-19, uh, if we're going to lose, you know, half a million dollars from the state that they normally contribute, I believe about 3.9 total, that's, that's a fair amount and that, that'll affect us. So, um, so that one kind of threw me off too, but um, I don't know. I just kind of... It, it's been mixed responses. Um, I know we've got, I don't know if you guys have gotten emails. I've gotten some emails um, questioning it um, for different reasons, but it's too late now, you know, the damage is done, so. If I may, and I, I appreciate it too, Michael, just like with Becky, if I may just explain, because I've read uh, the post out there about this being unfair and what have you. Let me just tell you simply my mindset, and that had been First of all, there were a number of years where people saying, we need to send a newsletter, we need to update people, we don't communicate often enough. And ultimately, we made the decision about three years ago, you know what, cost effectively, maybe the easiest way to communicate would be to send something with a, a mailing we're already sending with the summer tax bill. So it was an efficiency issue. So for the past several years, I've used that as an update. This year, I asked Rich and Carol each to contribute an excerpt, and here's why specifically. The things I keep hearing over and over again this year have really been uh, twofold. One, I hear worry that with COVID-19 and all, as you just brought up, Michael, are we on good financial footing? The second thing I hear is that with um, the elections going on and everyone receiving absentee ballots, people are not, there's a number of people not happy because I hear about it, maybe you do too, about absentee ballots just being mailed out. A, did they use our money? B, does that mean we're not gonna get to go to the polls personally and vote as is our constitutional right? And so those things to me fell under the clerk and the, the previous one under the treasurer. So I said to each of them separately, would you address that issue for me, being that that's your bailiwick or your area, and would you provide me an excerpt to add to my newsletter? That was my invitation and that was the rationale. I'm not saying that now in you know, the reflection, your reflection or those who posted that they couldn't have otherwise taken it a different way. All right, again, I, I can't, I can't, uh, I can't unring that bell in their mind, but that was truly not my mindset. So I guess I'll just leave that on the record. And again, res I respect your opinion. Well, thank you. Um, and I did have one other question too, and I don't know if anybody has an interest in it, but um, it, it, you know, this being another issue with a liquor license, um, I would like at some point, maybe it's um, piggybacking off another meeting coming up, not a special meeting, but just uh, maybe a special meeting so there's no expense to the taxpayers to schedule a separate one. But just to kind of go through what's our vision for liquor licenses um, and how, where do our ordinance, where do our ordinances sit now? Do we need to revise them to be more friendly to distilleries, wineries, microbreweries that, that are a bit unique? So maybe, and then as far as the number of licenses, do we talk about a number of X amount of licenses for this, a restaurant X amount for a winery or distillery or brewery? Um, but I would, I would probably sooner rather than later like to just have a board discussion um, and just kind of get, get an idea of where we're headed. So that way businesses can kind of look at it and say, well, this is, this is the direction they want to go and we fit in it. All businesses will kind of know and then they can all kind of say, yeah, this, this might work for us. 
that's just my in favor thought. of that kind of conversation my thought would be though if we're going to set aside liquor licenses liquor licenses for specific purposes we should maybe consider doing it as a percent of our total instead of a certain number so that if our total grows as the years progress um then the then the numbers in those subsets would would grow proportionally um but i would be up to having a conversation about that to keep this moving forward okay. all right uh hearing no other comments may we entertain a motion to adjourn at this time i would make the motion oh, mr chairman for all right all in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. anyone opposed all right, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thanks, Jim.